Hello everyone, I'm Robert Chaffer, the product manager of the Beneteau Trawler range, and welcome to the Grand Trawler 62. The Grand Trawler 62 is the new flagship of the 2022 Beneteau Trawler range that starts at 35 feet and now extends to 62 feet and features five models in the range. The Grand Trawler 62 builds on the established Swift Trawler core values of seaworthiness, easy circulation, timeless design, and practical functionality. The Grand Trawler 62 features a highly efficient and seaworthy full displacement hull, allowing exceptional autonomy between eight and 12 knots, with engines capable of taking the boat over 20 knots when required. You will see we have fully exploited the space this 5.45 meter beam full displacement hull allows to create a very comfortable layout that breathes easily, allowing a quiet luxury and feeling of well-being throughout the entire boat. At the stern of the boat, we have the bathing platform area. We have a usable space of five meter beam by 1.6 meter depth. The tender lift dinghy allowance is 400 kilograms. The bathing platform features transformed stairs on port, fold away dinghy chocks and pad eyes. A substantial bathing ladder is in the starboard side. And note the full width transverse step that I'm sat on here, which also doubles as a seat, allowing easy circulation when deploying the dinghy, as well as being a lovely place to be on the boat. And on the port side, we have the gullwing hatch that goes to the lazarette and engine room space. And on starboard, we find the shore support locker containing the power, deck wash, and shore water hookup. Below the starboard transom gate, we have space for a 3.35 meter passerelle, and adjacent to this in the side combing is the transom shower. Here we have the aft cockpit area. We have a teak capped, full width transparent push pit with port and starboard sliding gates, and which is a unique feature on this boat. The Norta design team have created an outward facing space to enjoy the sea. We call this the terrace to the sea. This arrangement is complemented by the aft-facing L-shaped seating you hit see behind me, which also has a folding table. The seat space has space underneath for two eight-person life rafts, and this option is mandatory if you select the flybridge crane above. On port and starboard, we have generous rope benches with optional capstans. Forward, we have bulwark gates on port and starboard, and in the floor of the cockpit, we find the secondary hatch to the lazarette. Moving to the flybridge stairs on the right-hand side, we find control panels for the passerelle and tender lift and the third station joystick. The overhead perimeter of the canopy has the stowage for the aft cockpit cover. This features roll-up windows and mesh panels. Also note the overhead safety handrail and the speakers. Here we are on the main deck. Overall, the main deck has 31.5 square meters of floor space. Coming through the patio doors, on the port side, we have a large U-shaped sofa with comfortable seating for up to eight and a coffee table in the center. The ceiling above features a wood perimeter pelmet, overhead speakers, and a safety handrail. On the starboard side, adjacent to the patio door, we have the light switches, the fusion stereo, and we have a long sideboard with plentiful storage and space. Aft, we have a 23 bottle wine cooler. Forward, we have a 95 litre draw fridge. Forward of that, we have crockery storage, a lift up mechanism for a 50 inch TV. Forward of this, we have a compartment where you'll find the fuel shutoffs, manual fire extinguisher, and power points for table lamps, etc. The center part of the sideboard can also be configured as a two-seater sofa opposite the U-shaped sofa. Decor-wise, this boat's interior joinery is finished in satin oak with the optional white oak flooring. The saloon windows are complemented by dark walnut wooden Venetian blinds set within sterling gray palmets. The joinery is also available in walnut. 
Here we have the dining area. So this is moving forward from the aft saloon. We find uh, either side of that step up port and starboard servery cupboards that can be fitted out with uh, Vuroy Bock, glassware, crockery and cutlery, providing easy service to this dining area. Now we find the dining table itself with comfortable dining for up to eight people. The outboard side of the dinette seat provides storage for up to four folding dining chairs, which can also be used at the cockpit and flybridge tables. The tabletop has got three positions. Passage maker, where it's hard out to starboard, revealing a handrail. Pushing it out to port, reveals an easy access to the storage and get into the chairs. And in its centre position, shown here, is its dining position. Opposite the dinette, we find the galley. The galley can be configured, as we see here, with sliding door and glass windows to close the space. There is a full height 255 litre fridge freezer adjacent to a four burner induction hob with charcoal hood above and cupboard. And below that, a 40 litre multifunction microwave oven with wine rack adjacent. Adjacent to the galley side door, we have plentiful workspace with a sink and trash receptacle on the top, where we have plentiful cupboards, drawers, and overhead lockers with space inboard for a dishwasher. So here we have the main helm with the pilot seat on both centre line and forward of that a two and a half metre wide central windscreen um, and a helm station capable of housing three 16 inch screens. On the starboard side we have the throttles, the Ventix joystick, uh, the Beneteau ship control panel, VHF, trim tabs and optional gyro. On the port side we have the switches, uh, autopilot and thruster panels, um, to port with recessed working surfaces and charge points and, and storage close to hand. The comfortable pilot seat features armrests, fore and aft adjustment and flip up bolster. An additional co-pilot seat as we see here can be fitted as well. On the port side outboard we have a banquette seat long enough to be used as a day bed and a great place for convivial uh, conversation during long passage making. Just aft of the helm area on the port side are the stairs up to the flybridge. On forward, starboard, is the side door and the stairs to the lower accommodation, making the main helm the centre point of the circulation around the boat, which is as it should be for easy handling. To the right hand side of the main helm are the stairs down to the lower accommodation. At the top of the stairwell, you will find the outboard cupboard containing the AC and DC power distribution panels. In the lower passageway is the hatch to access the pumps, water heater and grey water tank. So here we discover the, uh, the owner cabin of the free cabin layout. Um, this uh, stateroom cabin occupies uh, 14 square metres. At the entrance of the cabin we have a lovely lobby area with a door on starboard to the ensuite. And in the cabin itself, we find a two metre long by 1.7 metre wide bed on centre line with bedside lockers. The bed lifts up on gas struts, providing plentiful uh, top entry storage. On the starboard side, there is a large sideboard with uh, space inside for a digital locking safe. Uh, there's a corner cupboard and wardrobe forward. Under the window blinds, there are actually additional top access uh, storage lockers as well. On the port side, we have a dressing table desk with stool. The central compartment features a vanity mirror and a cable management port uh, with space to put a laptop on charge. On the starboard bulkhead forward, we have space for a 50 inch television. On the starboard side of the cabin lobby area, we have the door to the ensuite bathroom. This bathroom features a Corian work surface Vilroy Bock wash basin, electric toilet with separate walk-in shower cubicle and uh, rain shower. Here we are in the Ford uh, VIP cabin. In the bow underneath the hull side window, we find a two meter long by 1.55 meter wide double bed. We have uh, bedside lockers and uh, all facing towards the starboard hull window. There is easy circulation around the bed with uh, cupboards on starboard and an optional hinged uh, TV above. And then we have a wardrobe forward and the bed lifts up on gas struts, providing top entry storage 
And under the cabin floor we have access panels to the bow thruster and batteries. On the starboard side of the cabin, we have an ensuite bathroom with a Corian work surface and the Roybock wash basin, electric toilet and completely separate uh, shower cubicle. Note, with the four cabin layout, this cabin becomes the owner cabin. Decor wise, each cabin features satin oak joinery complemented by ice white panelling and porcelain white Venetian blinds and ivory carpet with underlay creating a calm, relaxing space. The joinery is also available in a walnut finish. So here we are in the uh, port guest cabin and underneath the uh, hull window we find uh, two single berths, two metres long by 75 centimetres wide with a bedside locker in between. We also have uh, infill panels that stow underneath this bed to make up a large double. We have a large wardrobe forward and cupboard below. And then again, we have an ensuite door directly into the day head. The day head also has an access door from the passageway. Um, and in the day head, you will find a Corian work surface, Vorobok wash basin, electric toilet, and separate shower cubicle. The alternative aft cabin layout uh, is what we call the fore cabin layout. This alternative space consists of two aft guest cabins side by side with uh, separate berths measuring uh, 2 metres by 75 centimetres, complete with infills to make them up into double beds. Both of these cabins feature uh, storage cupboards aft with wardrobes forward and share the starboard bathroom through a private lobby space. Here we are on the flybridge. We have over 34 square metres of floor space here. Starting on the port side forward is the hatch to the internal stairs to the main helm. And on starboard, we have a sheltered sun pad area forward of the helm console. Then we have the flybridge helm with excellent all round visibility and with up to three 16 inch screens and space for the Aventix joystick um, by the throttles, all arranged for easy docking. An additional co pilot seat can also be fitted. Opposite, we have an L-shaped seating area for convivial passage making. Just aft of the L-shaped seating area on the port side, we have a huge uh, U-shaped seating area with folding table for up to eight to dine in comfort. Aft of the helm station, we have the wet bar serving out to guests, featuring a 65 litre draw fridge, barbecue grill, sink, storage, trash bin, with optional ice maker. At the aft end of the flybridge, we find the stairs to the aft cockpit on starboard and space for a flybridge crane rated to 400 kilogram capacity. Four pad eyes are fitted in the combing and it, the dealer fits chocks depending on the customer choice of dinghy or jet ski. Without the crane, this plinth is the location for a 16 person life raft and this space can be used for sun lounges, etc., in combination with an overhead bimini that covers the aft area. The Flybridge T-top features speakers and can be fitted with an electric soft top, solar panels, and finished in metallic gray paint. So here we have the foredeck. Forward we find a, a large sun pad with adjustable headrests and drinks holders either side. And outboard of this, we have uh, storage lockers for four fenders. Forward of the sun pad, we find a seat with adjustable backrests, drinks holders, and recesses for books and snacks to relax and enjoy an aperitif or digestif through the evening. Note, we also in these uh, recesses have areas for the, the sockets for the foredeck bimini, and that provides shade over this whole area and when not in use, the foredeck bimini rolls up and stows underneath the windscreen overhang. On the bow, we have an optional rope capstan and aft facing speakers in the bulwark. The starboard bow locker stows four fenders, bimini poles, the deck wash, the plug-in controls for the anchor windlass and the rope capstan. The port side chain locker stows an additional two fenders. Behind the teak slatted fashion plate, we have transparent doors that block the wind to the aft cockpit area when swinging on anchor. Moving forward in the well-protected side decks with overhead canopy, 
we have the service lockers containing the fuel and water fillers and then the waste discharge. Then we have the starboard side door to the main helm and spring cleats outside close to hand. The stern of the boat we find the lazarette. The main lazarette access is through the port side gullwing hatch leading to stairs with cupboards outboard and a cupboard aft that can be fitted with a combination washer dryer. The stairs lift up to access the stern thruster batteries and charger. The toilet and shower compartments have been deliberately separated from the crew cabin to allow dual use of the facilities so that after a swim or sunbathing, guests can use these facilities without having to go into the main accommodation forward. On starboard, we have the crew cabin. There are for two persons, featuring two crossover berths, wardrobe and storage. There is space underneath the lower berth for a 100 uh, litre per hour water maker. Here we have the uh, engine room, which is accessed from the lazarette passageway. Starting forward, we have port and starboard 1,935 litre fuel tanks, which gives 3,870 litres in total. The tanks feature sight gauges, standard MAN and generator filters with Raycol fuel filters in option. Between the tanks, above a quick gyro stabiliser, we have space for an Onan 4.5 kilowatt or Fisher Panda 25i generator, giving 220 volt supply. Between the engines, underneath the tread plate, we have four times AGM 140 amp hour engine batteries and six times 140 amp hour domestic batteries. The engines are MAN i6 730 horsepower units installed to MAN gold standard, which gives us the five year warranty. Outboard of the starboard engine is the generator battery, the battery switch box, the high load thermal switches above, above that the Aventix joystick processor, then we have the two 40 amp battery chargers, the 2000 watt inverter, the quick gyro driver, shore selectors, ducted air intakes and underwater exhaust system. Outboard of the port side engine we have mirrored ducted air intakes and underwater exhaust and just aft we have outboard the Dometic variable speed aircon chiller with space forward for the Webasto diesel heater. I very much hope that you've enjoyed today's visit on board the Grand Trawler 62 and we look forward to seeing you soon.